If you enjoy the first release of a movie, nine chances out of ten, you'll like the sequel. Well, that's what I'm counting on happening with Fancy Footworks 2. Over six years ago, the first release of this Not Ready for the Big Screen series aired. The response was extremely positive. Starting with this episode, I'll showcase additional presser feet. The first feature is the invisible zipper foot. It was designed to do one thing and do that well, namely, use it to insert an invisible zipper. I'd like to show you how. Fancy Footworks 2, that's what's coming up next on Sewing with Nancy. Sewing with Nancy, celebrating 30 years of sewing and quilting with Nancy Zeman is made possible by Baby Lock, a complete line of sewing, quilting, and embroidery machines and sergers. Baby Lock, for the love of sewing. Madeira, specializing in embroidery, quilting, and special effects threads because creativity is never black and white. Koala Studios, fine sewing furniture custom built in America. Clover, makers of sewing, knitting, quilting, and embroidery products for over 25 years. Experience the Clover difference. Amazing designs and Class A needles. Recently in my blog, I asked the question, what would you like to learn most on Sewing with Nancy? And to my great surprise, the number one request was how to insert an invisible zipper. So, your wish is true. With this zipper, all you see is the tab of the specialty zipper and the tape is enclosed within the seam. Now, in order to do this, you need to buy a specialty foot and the zipper. And let's look at the foot. The foot goes along with the zipper. It has special rollers in the front. It has various shanks that can slide onto the base in comparison to a traditional zipper foot. With a traditional zipper foot, you cannot stitch close enough to the coil of the invisible zipper. This is a different zipper type in addition to the foot because it has a coil. It doesn't look, you can't see the teeth. And here is the zipper itself. And what we're going to do first is an unusual step for zipper process, and that is to press from the wrong side the coil flat. You want it flat so that we will not get a little preview or sneaking preview of what's the zipper coil underneath. So we're gonna press that flat. Now at the sewing machine, I have one half of what's going to be a skirt sample. This is the right side of the skirt and I have marked the seam allowance, 5 eighths of an inch, marked it down the edge, a light chalk mark. I have not sewn the seam below the zipper. The seam has not been sewn. So here is the right side of the skirt, the right side of the zipper, and you flip so that you have right sides together. And align the, the pressed out coil to the 5 eighths of an inch line. If you did not press it flat, you're not gonna be able to sew right in this edge. So let me get this lined up. And the roller portion of the foot is going to scroll right down this little coil. And you can do some pinning. I'm just going to kind of hold it into place. And as I'm stitching, I'm going to stitch so that the coil, the zipper foot, is right stitching in that area. So you're gonna do a little testing like I just did. And now just sew, and notice how that roller section is guiding right next to the coil. So you, it takes a little time to stitch it down and ma match that 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. And I'm sewing to the end. Now, obviously, we're going to have a roadblock in this area. So I'm just going to use my stiletto, flatten this out, and stitch as close as I can to the stopping point, and then cut the thread. After you've sewn one half, then bring the other half of your skirt, your pants, whatever you're creating, meet right sides together. And this is the right sides together. And now you want to make sure that you're starting at the same point. Oh, I'm starting about at an eighth of an inch from the top. Lower, sink the foot to make sure that I'm sewing in the right spot flatten out the coil and stitch. And let that zipper foot run right down the pressed coil. And again, I'm gonna to get to a roadblock where all these seams come together and stitch to the point and clip. Now, we'll see how we did. When I raise this up and 
I'll be zipping the zipper. Let me just zip it up for you. And we should have an invisible zipper. But the seam has not been sewn at the bottom edge. So we're going to meet the seams right sides together like we normally would. And luckily, my seams match pretty well, even though I'm talking and sewing at the same time. I can use the same foot. That's the nice part about it. But I'm going to slide the foot to the left so that as I'm stitching, the needle will go along the right side of the foot. I'll guide this along the 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. And if I did my sewing correctly, as I'm reaching, reaching to this point, because I, have, I don't have a foot in the way, I can sew right next to my original stitching. Cut the threads, and we'll see how I did. Now I have to admit, sewing and talking are not always the right combination. But as I pull this to the right side, you'll see there's a little chalk mark, but everything meets in this area. I'm working on silk dupioni, and it would need a little press. But notice that with just three rows of stitching, I have a zipper that is enclosed in the seam. You can't see the zipper tape. It's one continuous seam. And a great technique of combining the unique zipper foot, the invisible zipper foot, and the specialty zipper. For smooth sailing over varied thicknesses of fabrics, stitching nap fabrics, or sewing on tacky surfaces, the roller foot is your choice. Next on Fancy Footworks 2, the, we're going to take a close-up look at this specialty foot that's been around a long time. Sometimes it comes in along with your sewing machine. It may be, have metal rollers. It may have plastic rollers. Regardless, there are two sets, one near the toes of the foot and near the back. is just a, a second or split into two. It's a little easier to see on this version with the metal rollers. And the purpose of this, as I put it on the top of my machine, is that the bottom of the foot does not ride on the fabric, rather just the rollers. So if you have a tacky surface, if you have a nap fabrics, you're not going to have as much friction and it will sew so much more readily. Now we made this trim and thread pizza. Many times we use this for embellishment. This is just a small sample. There's a lot of varieties of thicknesses because we have thread, fabric, trim, um, kind of a fun embellishment. When creating the sandwich for this it trim, I'd like to use wash away. Now I have on a base fabric, the base fabric and then lots of extra thread. Now if you have an embroidery machine and you have lots of thread clippings that you may want to keep a a little bag by the side of your machine because it could come in, happy, in handy for this trim and thread pizza. Then we also have put some suede and trim. Just like you're making a pizza, you'd add some oh, dried tomatoes and, and you'd add some, I like anchovies on my pizza, so we'd add some of those and, and then some cheese. So then you can cover it with the wash away stabilizer and pin the layers together. Another option would be to cover the top with clear vinyl. Then you wouldn't have to wash this away later on. But this is the option we're going to show you right now of dissolving this after we do the stitching. Speaking of stitching, the setting is pretty simple. We're going to set the machine for a zigzag stitch. And a wide width would work out well. A length, oh, let's say one to two. You can do some settings test out some settings, and then use a universal or a sharp needle. If you're going through lots of thicknesses, consider a sharp needle. Now the roller foot on this tacky surface of the wash away of the varied, thick, varied thicknesses that we have, you just do zigzag stitching, just stitch. And it's kind of random. There, you don't certainly have to follow, maybe I should take out this pin, here we go. You don't have to follow any pattern. You're just tacking down all the surfaces. And because later on we're going to be dissolving this, as I look at it as I go over a lot of thicknesses, it just rides over that area. We can simply just ride, just fill in the blanks. And you want to have a lot of gridded or random surface and just kind of mindless sewing, just fill it in. 
And I'm kind of going in a circle. You don't necessarily have to do that. You can just see the, just want to have kind of fun with this. So I'll just do some more turning. Then after you have done lots of the stitching and you think that you have nice coverage of your stitching, then you're going to look at how we have it here. Lots of stitching, lots of layers. Then you can dip it in water, soak it in water, and the top layer will come off. And after the saturation, and you have to kind of work that wash away, stabilizer away. It, it's cornstarch based, so you don't have to worry about it having any ill effects on your fabric or the water. But then that will dissolve and you'll have this pizza. An embellishment, but you're using the roller foot to easily go over the tacky surface of the wash away, or if you'd like to have vinyl on the top to make it permanent cover on the top. And then the varied thicknesses of whatever trim you have can easily be accomplished by letting the rollers of the foot easily glide over the fabric. Make the edges of a seam meet perfectly or quilt multiple layers without shifting using a walking foot. It's a hard working presser foot that most sewing and quilting enthusiasts shouldn't be without. When sewing multiple layers together, like as in a quilt, this small little sample shows like the top layer has batting and has backing. Often on the sides, the edges aren't even because of the shifting. Why the shifting? Well, with a traditional presser foot, it pushes the top layer, the feed dogs bite the fat lower layer, and then the top layer becomes longer. Well, with the walking foot, there are special designs incorporated in this foot that help prevent the shifting. This is an, an unusual foot, has lots of features to it, and we'll kind of take each feature one by one. First of all, there's a C-clamp, and this C-clamp, you'll see later, fits around the needle bar. So as the needle goes up and down, then you'll see the unique grip pad on, on the foot that goes through the opening of the foot feel like I'm working with a little boy's toy here, but it's kind of fun to see that on this grip pad, when the needle is in the raised position, it's being held down, the fabric's being held down by this pad that has a textured underneath surface. It's kind of fun to watch how this works on your machine. It fits on with a low shank. You can get it in low shank and sometimes high shank. It may come with your machine. You may buy it uh, separately. It all depends upon what's included in your accessory box. And then there's a third part of it. And this guide bar along the side will make it easier for you to sew equidistance between rows if you're doing machine quilting, let's say for a baby blanket. Honestly, the hardest part about working with a walking foot is getting it on your machine. I find it easiest to completely remove the screw that attaches the foot to your machine so that you can place the C-bar or C-clamp over the needle bar. I have my walking foot on my machine and the C-clamp is black. So you can see it clamping over that needle bar where, the, where you remove the needle and then I have, of course, the guide bar on the side. There are two types or two times when I use this. When I have heavily nap fabrics such as corduroy or, or velveteen, and when I work with this, just lower the presser foot, and I have a straight stitch, you don't have to do a lot of pinning. Now, as I'm sewing, look at what happens. Look at those pads, how they, when it's the re needle is, now it's down, so it's raised, so it can advance, and now it holds it flat, flat flat so it prevents the shifting the, the traditional mechanism that takes place when sewing now obviously I'm going to have an even lengths of my top layer and bottom layer as I do this but when you incorporate three layers batting top and backing to a, this is a small sample, but to a quilt, you're going to pin your layers together, then mark a 45, I prefer marking a 45 degree angle on my fabric. And then if I'd like to have my rows about an inch and a quarter apart, I'll tighten the screw so that the guide can easily be positioned at that same mark and then just stitch. It's just straight, straight stitching. The foot does the work for you. But it d prevents all these layers from shifting on even distances. And now from my next row, I simply guide the bar. 
next to the first stitch and see if I can sew straight. It's not difficult, but and you get the general idea. The foot does the work for you. Just like tools for carpentry, plumbing, or any other interesting type of process, we have the same kind of processes are helped by working with specialty feet. So when you're working with a walking foot, it helps have all the layers have equal distances when you're finished the stitching. When a satin edge or an applique edge is on your sewing agenda, use the satin edge foot. Designed with an even zigzag stitch in mind, this specialty foot provides a uniform stitch, ideal for finishing edges. Not all of us have sergers, and if you are, would like a finished edge, this satin stitched satin edge foot is ideal for getting that heavy concentration of thread on an edge without puckering. We've used chiffon, or you can use organdy, or cotton fabrics. It really doesn't matter because this, this foot will help you achieve it. Now, it comes in a package with multiple shanks for the foot. So you'll have to find which shank best fits your foot. And do use the shank that comes with the machine rather than snapping it onto your machine. The reason is this is a little bit more secure. So I found out the hard way. Use the sh hard way. Use the shank that comes with this package. Now, when working with this, I want you to look at two details, mainly the metal pin, and that will be the key for the stitches to have a uniform look. The zigzag stitch will stitch over the metal pin, so the stitches are formed in that pin. Regardless of the weight of your fabric, it's not going to pucker. The pin can be adjusted, and as well as with the guide bar, by turning the the screw on the side. So you can get it further away, you can get a wider zigzag stitch, a narrow zigzag stitch. It's Again, a lot of testing is needed. So you're going to attach this to your sewing machine and then set your machine for a zigzag stitch. And as we look at my screen, uh, the width that I have set is at three and the length at one. Again, testing will be needed. A relatively short stitch length, a relatively wide, medium to width zigzag. And then use an embroidery needle. I'm, because I'm using rayon thread for this particular fabric. So match the needle with the thread. Now when you set this on, on your machine, you're going to have to turn the wheel by hand a couple of times to make certain that the needle straddles the, that metal pin. And you may want, want to adjust this depending upon where you have your stitch set. And then the fold of the fabric, I folded the fabric in half, goes uh, lines next to the guide bar. And the shorter stitch length, I'm just stitching over the pin. And as I'm stitching, it just guides. And we purposely chose lightweight fabric. And I realize you can't see it just yet, but you will after I do some stitching. Lightweight fabric like this and having a traditional zigzag, would, you'd have a wavy edge, perhaps a puckery edge, but not in this instance. And as I lift this up, I'm going to show you what it looks like. You have a very fine edge, really evenly stitched, and you can see what a nice look that is. I could even have the stitch wider or closer together, but I like that finished edge. Now, you may not always want to have two layers of fabric and a finished edge. Napkins, this would make an ideal stitch and way of finishing napkins with a satin edge, but you may not want like to have two layers. This small little sample shows uh, the satin edge stitch, and then we've pressed under oh, half of an inch prior to doing the stitching. Then trim away the excess fabric, and you can trim away using a beveling technique. Beveling just means to have your scissors and the fabric at the same plane. And by guiding the edge of the scissors, regardless if it's curved or not, you can cut right next to the stitch. If you, if you cut in the normal section, you'll get a, a distance, you'll get a little extra th fabric, but guiding it on this, beveling it, you have a nice finish. So, the trick is to use a satin stitch, stitching over the metal pin, guiding the fabric right next to the edge. Again, you can make the stitch close together, you can make it very uh, uh, close together or slightly narrow as I have on this sample. 
You're the designer, you're the sewer. Make the foot work to your best advantage. We sew because we like the process. We sew because we like the end result. And we sew because, on occasion, we sew to honor special people in our lives. Today's Nancy's Corner guest created a gift of a quilt that crossed decades using military uniforms as the fabric to honor military service. I'd like to introduce you to Kathy Ott. Kathy is a retired U.S. Army Reserve Major and has made a very special quilt. Welcome to Sewing with Nancy, Kathy. Thanks for inviting me today, Nancy. I, I had to ask you to be my guest when I read about this quilt because you made it for a special person. Yes, I did. I made it for my daughter Alicia's boyfriend, Zach uh, Radke. He is a specialist in the United States Army Reserve and is stationed at the 377th Maintenance Company in Manitowoc, Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. And you have many uniforms in here. Yes, I do. As the fabric. Yes, there are five different uniforms in this quilt. And they start with uh, uniforms that I wore when I was in the military. Three of the different squares, uh, different types of uniforms have the OD fabric in them. Mm -hmm. uh, one was one of the first original OD fabrics, which was, uh, which required a lot of ironing <laughs> in order to keep it straight. Uh, then was the permanent press uniform and then the third OD green one is the uh, uniform that was worn in Vietnam, which mm -hmm. was much more lightweight. So things have changed since th that era and that decade in, in both feeling of the military and the uniforms as well. Yes, it has. Yes, it has. And they've have, they have patterns in their uniforms sure. now. Uh, so I uh, was fortunate enough to wear the BDU with the, the uh, forest camouflage in it. And then today, Zach, he wears a uniform that has more of a digital pattern mm -hmm. to it. And that you sure. can see in the lower pa panel here. And you incorporated many interesting batiks, the brown and the black. It really mm -hmm. makes the, the green stand out. Thank you. Really a nice combination. Light, means and darks, regardless if you use military fabric or if you use traditional fabric, right? Yes. The part that I find fascinating as well is the border. And the border we'll show you next. And we've recycled them, Sewing with Nancy, many times, but this is another way of recycling. And this bottom panel is part of one of the newer uniforms. And it has on it one of the pockets from the actual uniform itself. And it has the Velcro on it where you can stick patches on it, such as the names. Uh -huh. And so you can put them on and take them off. And it also has his rank on here. And it has all of his uh, uh, ranks since sure. he's been in the military. And you put more patches of his. And his unit patches over on this side. And he can add more patches as he gets into more units. And you signed your quilt with a cuff. I like yes. this. And on the back is the cuff from one of my uniforms and then also with my rank on it. Kathy told me that the tricky part was cutting the uniforms, not necessarily the geometric shape, but making that first snip. Exactly, exactly. Cutting into a uniform that I had taken so, so uh, much care for was, the, was hard. <laughs> and you're used to pressing and, maintain, and maintaining it, yes. and now you were cutting, cutting it up. up. Yes. <laughs> so good job making that first cut. This is very charming, has a great story to tell, and the reason you made it is because... I made it for Zach so that if he gets called up, uh, gets deployed, uh, that he has something from home to take with him, that he can curl up into his <laughs> duffel bag. It's small enough, compact enough, so that it could actually fit in and he could carry it. Oh, it's great. And it's machine quilted with variegated threads, and it's quite compact, and it's heavy because uh, the, the fabrics that some of the fabrics that you have in here are not the traditional weight of cottons. So Correct. It will keep someone warm and comfortable. What yes. a work of, of love that you put in this, Kathy. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me come today. You're very welcome. And if you'd like to learn more about Kathy and also the guests on Sewing with Nancy and anything Sewing with Nancy, you can go to nancyzeman.com where you can watch 52 of the most current Sewing with Nancy programs online. 
At the bottom of the page, you'll find an area that says Nancy's Corner. Just click on that, and you will be able to find out information of all our guests during this session of the program. You can also sign up for my, our blog and other social marketing areas. I hope you've enjoyed this first program of the of this series. We'll be back next time with the conclusion of the program. Thanks for joining us. Bye for now. Nancy's fully illustrated Fancy Footworks 2 workbook includes a three ring binder with laminated instructions for all the feet featured during this three part series. It's $19.99 plus shipping and handling. To order the workbook, call 800 336 or visit our website at sewingwithnancy.com slash 2605. Order item number BK2605, Fancy Footworks 2, credit card orders only. To pay by check or money order, call the number on the screen for details. Visit Nancy's website at nancyzeven.com to see additional episodes, Nancy's blog, and more. Sewing with Nancy, celebrating 30 years of sewing and quilting with Nancy Zeman, has been brought to you by Baby Lock, Madeira Threads, Koala Studios, Clover, Amazing Designs and Class A Needles, Closed Captioning Funding, provided by Olissa. Sewing with Nancy is a co-production of Nancy Zeman Productions and Wisconsin Public Television.